Um, <coughs> well, I think at UPS, the one thing we pride ourselves with is the fact that we have invested a lot in the company. But when we talk about the company, we just don't talk about the assets. We don't talk about the buildings. We don't talk about the trucks. It's also the community mm -hmm. and our employees. We can't be able to do what we do today, and we wouldn't have been able to develop into the multi-billion dollar company that we are today if we did not invest in our people. From a leadership perspective, I mean, we are constantly um, uh, researching on different types of tools and different mm -hmm. types of methodologies to, you know, to provide leadership training to our employees. Um, from and it just depends on, on the discipline that they're in, you know, and also just encouraging them to participate in different types of associations, professional associations, mm -hmm. where they're able to develop themselves. And then the one thing that UPS has been known for, it's part of our culture, is a culture of promoting from within. So one, pushing our employees to do more, mm -hmm. um, and then identifying the employees that have portray that they have the potential mm -hmm. and giving them an opportunity to show what they can be able to do. Um, I think I'm one of those, you know, yeah. promoted from within. I st mm -hmm. started off with a company and I've been promoted a couple of times. Um, and but my story is not unique within the organization. Mm -hmm. So being able to invest in the people, providing them the training, providing them with the opportunities for growth, providing them with the opportunities to discover and, you know, and move to different parts of the country in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and different parts of the world as well, which I think is very, very crucial. Um, as far as being able to take that, I mean, the pres when we had our workshop yesterday, one mm -hmm. of the things that we talked about is the STEP project that Kevin Eder has been working on with the Gavi. And it's more about the Gavi Alliance, so the ministries of health and making right. sure that we're able to leverage the training that we offer our employees in a commercial setting mm -hmm. um, down to the Ministry of Health, right? And mm -hmm. giving them that capacity, giving them the access. The training that they're going to be working on is a one, two, three, or one, three, five. I think it's one, three, right. five is a, yeah. is a process. Uh, where they have one week of you know FaceTime and then three weeks of the actual training mm -hmm. and then there's then they go off and uh, three months three months three of months. actual field work and then there's a mentorship program after right. that mm -hmm. um, and you know we've spent some time reviewing with Gavi and members of the alliance mm -hmm. you know the the task force with the people in practice task force and trying to figure out what's the best way we can be able to do what we do for ourselves you know as a company or right. what we are the, ass the assets that we have mm -hmm. and access to information and types of trainings that we have access to, how can we leverage that to the humanitarian community? Yeah. So kicks off in January. Um, I think the first they, they start doing a lot of uh, online types of collaboration and webinars between uh, beginning next week, mm -hmm. um, and it will be interesting to see what you know whether it's going to be impactful. We think mm -hmm. so because we've been able to see what it's done for our UPSs.